Hey, hey, this is Patrick, and this is going to be a video on how to send data from Slack back to Google Sheets and AppSheet. First, I'm going to start by creating a new AppSheet. So you can watch along or you can skip forward. I'll insert a timestamp here so you can see where to fast forward to. I'm going to create a really quick app connect it to Slack, and then send some data back from Slack into our app. Here we go. My first column is going to be a unique ID. My next column is going to be first name, last name, comment, and then this is going to be our value. This is the value that I'm going to get from Slack back to Google Sheets and AppSheet. I'm going to give this a name, comments, by user number two. All right, here's the fun part. Extensions, app sheet, create an app. Customize with app sheet. We're gonna jump into our data here. And here we go. We have this unique ID, which is assigned an initial value of unique ID. What this means is app sheet will create a unique ID or reference number, which is a key. And this is going to be a way that we're going to refer between Slack and AppSheet. When Slack sends it, it's going to say, hey, find this unique ID here, find our unique ID, and then update this value column. So let's get to work here. First, we're going to create our automation, create a new bot, configure event, create a custom event. And this event is going to be ads only. Let's add a step, create a custom step once again. I'm doing these things quickly. I'm not putting names on things. This is not an app that I'm going to continue to use. But when you are creating apps that you're going to continue to use, in order to be sustainable, you should be naming your events. You should be naming your steps. You should be giving good names to your apps and good names to your sheets and your var variables. Fantastic. Our new step is going to be calling a webhook. We're going to use a Slack hook for this. And now let's go back into our Slack. I'm going to go into my delete after December channel. Now we're back in Slack. We're in our de delete after December channel. I'm going to create a new integration, add an automation, and it's going to be a new workflow. We're going to build this new workflow. And here we're going to choose an event, which is from a webhook. Okay. So we're going to set up our variables, which is going to be UID done. It's going to be first name. There's no spaces in Slack. So once again, we're going to use underscores here. Continue setting up our variables, last name, and we're going to set up our comment field. So now we have this HTTP body. I'm going to copy that and click done. So let's go back to our app sheet. Here's our HTTP body. We're going to put this in here. And then the way that app sheet formats these variables is with two less than symbols an open square bracket, and then UID, close square, greater than, greater than, and we're going to continue. So let's copy this format over. Here we're going to call this first name with the space. This next one here is going to be last name with the space, and then comment is going to just be comment. We're going to hit save, go back to Slack, and here we need to get our webhook request URL. We're going to copy that link and we're going to go back to our automation and we're going to go back to our step and update our Slack URL. So here's our Slack URL and we're going to hit save. Okay. Now let's go back to our Slack and we're going to finish this automation. So first of all, we're going to want our Slack to display this message. Okay, so messages, and we're going to send a message to a channel. And the channel is delete after December. And our message is going to be simple. We're going to send the UID. We're going to send the first name, the last name, and the comment. Okay, here I'm just going to title this name. And I'm going to put a space in between the two. And then I'm going to put a comment here. You can make this bold. For example, you can stylize this however you want. Whatever you have as the variable will just pop up in that field, right? So whatever is our UID will pop up here. I can move this UID. I can move this down, for example, here. However you want to format it, that's entirely up to you. Now, I'm going to include a button. 
okay? So this button is going to go to the next step. So we can call this something different because we actually want the user to enter a value. So I'm going to put enter value. This is just the label of the button, okay? Save. So now you can see how this is going to look in the channel. We're going to have this untitled workflow send a message to our channel that says first name, last name, comment, and UID. When we click the button enter value, what do we want to happen? Well, we want a form to pop up. We're going to collect info in that form from the user. And the question is going to be, what is the value? And this is going to be, yeah, we can do any of these options, but I'm going to make it a short answer. But if you wanted to, you could make it a drop down, multiple choice, checkbox, file upload is totally possible. Uh, you could pick a certain Slack user, Slack channel, a date, a number. I'm just going to do short answer. Okay. Description, answer in one or two sentences, make this required, done. Save, please enter a title for this form. Yeah, request form, great. No problem, save. Now, what happens when we collect this value? Here's a suggested, suggested step, right? Choose where you'd like to save your form responses. This is great. So down here, we can scroll to Google Sheets. Add to spreadsheet is an option but we don't want that option. We don't want to delete anything from the spreadsheet. We don't need to select a row, but we want to update the spreadsheet. We're going to update a row, a specific row in the spreadsheet. Okay. Here we have to select the spreadsheet. Let's see here, I am going to call those comments by users too. Okay. Select the sheet is just the first sheet. Here we're going to choose a column to search, which is our UID, the cell value to find this is the UID that came in from the web book, right? So the UID came in and we're going to find that UID and then we're going to put the form value into that UID's row, right? So updated values. We're not going to update the UID or the first name, last name or comment, but we are going to update the value. So we click here and this is the collected info from the form. What is the value? Hit save and finish up. Well, what we could do, right? We could also send a message. This is fun. Let's add this just for fun. We're going to reply to a message in a thread. Okay. So we're going to use this to reply to a message in the thread. So which thread are we replying to the message that was originally sent, right? So we're going to insert a variable. And what we're going to do is the person who submitted the form person who clicked the button, we want the person who clicked that button. who clicked that button, submitted the form should be the same person. We could put this also. So this person who submitted the form has entered a value. Okay. Also sent to conversation. No. Do we want to include another button? We can, if we want to continue this workflow, right? This is where I'm going to end this workflow. Uh, this should give you a pretty good idea of how to use this. I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to publish this. This is now live. We're going to hit done here, exit this, and we're just going to test it out. This UID, let's say I wanted to not show this to the user. I don't have to show this to the user. I'll hit save. That UID will get generated anyway. First name, Bill Jackson. This is Bill's comment. So interesting. We have a value field, which uh, actually decided is a price. I actually want to change this to a text value. Okay. If I wanted to leave it as a price, that's fine, but I would expect that value in return from Slack. Currently in Slack, I just have it as a text box. So we want to make sure that we're kind of following along consistently. So Bill Jackson, this is Bill's comment and our value, we could leave it as blank or we can add a value. It doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, uh, we could hide it from this form in the future if we wanted to. Currently, we're just going to leave the value blank, but even if I put a value, it's still overwrite it and we're going to hit save. So here we should be able to see in our fleet after December, here's Bill Jackson's comment. So this just popped up at 3:50 PM. It's currently 3:50 PM. Can't see it over there because I'm on this side, but it's 3:50 PM. This just came in and we're going to enter a value. So here's the fun part. Enter a value up pops our Slack form. Okay. What is the value value from Slack? We're going to hit submit and now we're going to go back to our app sheet and we're going to take a look, right? We have comments by users. Let's see here. Here's Bill Jackson. Here's our value from Slack. Just for fun, let's view the data source. Here's our value from Slack. So what you can see, right? How does this work? 
First Slack receives your data through the webhook. Then your user presses that button and enters a value. When that value is entered, Slack sends it back to Google Sheets, okay? And it sends it to this column, but it uses this UID to search. After that, your value is there. As soon as your value is in the sheet, your value is in the app sheet too. And here we can see, if we open our thread, I have entered a new value. So there you go. This is uh, how to send data from Slack back to Google Sheets and AppSheet, how to respond to a thread using a workflow in Slack. All of this is great and will keep your, uh, keep your team organized. Good luck on your project. Thanks for watching.